Natural Vegetation and Wildlife, Class 9. So let's go through the introduction. Flora and Fauna. India is one of the 12 mega biodiversity countries of the world. There are around 47,000 plant species and India occupies 10th place in the world and 4th in Asia in plant diversity. 15,000 flowering plants in India account for 6% in the world's total number of flowering plants. Approximately 90,000 species of animals as well as a rich variety of fish is present in the fresh and marine waters. Natural vegetation refers to a plant community which has grown naturally without human aid and has been left undisturbed by humans for a long time. This is termed as virgin vegetation. The term flora is used to denote plants of a particular region or period. Similarly, the species of animals are referred to as fauna. Factors affecting the diversity of flora and fauna. So those are relief, climate and the type of vegetation. So relief we can understand are the relief or physical features. Climate as we know the weather conditions for a longer time. And type of vegetation the type of plants that grow there. So talking about relief, first we have land. Land affects the natural vegetation directly and indirectly. The nature of land influences the type of vegetation. The fertile level is generally devoted to agriculture. The undulating and rough terrains are the areas where grasslands and woodlands develop and give shelter to a variety of wildlife. Now coming to soil. Different types of soil provide basis for different types of vegetation. The sand soils of the desert support cactus and thorny bushes, while the wet and marshy deltaic soils support mangroves and deltaic vegetation. The hill slopes with some depth of soil have conical trees. Now coming to factors such as climate. So climate includes temperature. The character and extent of vegetation are mainly determined by temperature along with humidity in the air, precipitation and soil. So what is humidity? Humidity is the content of water vapor present in the air. On the slopes of Himalaya and the hills of peninsula above the height of 915 meters, the fall in the temperature affects the type of vegetation and its growth and changes it from tropical to subtropical temperate and alpine vegetation. So down you can see a table which represents the temperature respective months in which these temperatures are seen. Like for example in January what temperature is seen and what average temperature is seen in the whole year. And also the remarks are given. So let's see tropical. So tropical zone we talk about the annual temperature or the yearly average temperature is above 24 degrees Celsius. But the temperature in January, this is also the average, is 18, 18 degrees Celsius. Talking about the marks, there is no frost. About subtropical region, the temperature annually is 17 degrees Celsius to 24 degrees Celsius and average in January is 10 degrees Celsius to 18 degrees Celsius. Frost is very rare or simply rare. Temperate zone 7 degrees to 17 degrees annually and average temperature of January is from minus 1 degree Celsius to minus 10 degree Celsius. Frost plus some snow can be seen in these regions. Talking about alpine vegetation, the annual mean temperature or average temperature is below 7 degrees Celsius and the average temperature of January is below minus 1 degree Celsius. Remarks, snow can be seen. Now coming to the next two factors which include climate. 
that is photo period and precipitation so photo period by this word we can understand photo means sunlight for example photosynthesis photolysis photo period so these all include sunlight so the variation in the duration of sunlight at different places is due to the latitude altitude season and duration of the day so now let's see the difference between latitude and altitude so latitude is when so this is the earth and latitude is when these imaginary lines are known as latitudes but when i talk about altitude i zoom into the earth and come to land and this is my height or altitude for example if i'm somewhere here on the earth this place then the height from this place is known as altitude in 3d figures so talking again this is latitude longitude as we know and talking when i am on land for example this is a tree so this is my altitude so next is season and duration of the day whether it is this morning afternoon evening or night so due to longer duration of sunlight trees grow faster in summer as we know days are longer in summer and nights are shorter coming to precipitation in india almost the entire rainfall is brought in by the advancing southwest monsoon which comes from june to september and the retreating northeast monsoon now coming to forest so all you can see is the color green so forests are the renewable resources and play a major role in enhancing or improving the quality of environment so renewable resources the resources which can be renewed or regained again so for example there is a tree it becomes old and dies i can plant one more tree right i can plant one more plant or a sibling and then it will grow to a tree they modify the local climate they control soil erosion so how do they control soil erosion so suppose if this is my soil and there are no plants at all so water water will come and take the soil away but if i see if i see or plant if i plant tree or build a forest so they will hold the soil the roots will go deep and hold the soil so therefore if water passes it will water will get absorbed through the roots and water will get flushed away with some particles of soil thus preventing soil erosion so next is regulating stream flow support a variety of industries such as paper industries wood industries right and they also provide livelihood for many communities like the tribal communities they offer give panoramic or scenic view for recreation for like painters they give a scenic nature natural view which helps them to recreate their idea they control wind force and temperature and cause the rain they provide humus to the soil and shelter to wildlife what is humus humus is the it contains the dead decaying parts of different living organisms which are rich in nutrition sorry so come into types of vegetation so there are total five types of vegetation first tropical evergreen forest tropical deciduous forest tropical thorn forest and scrub mountain forest and mangrove forest so talking about tropical evergreen forest they are restricted to heavy rainfall and they are found in the areas of western ghats and group of lakshadweep islands Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the upper part of Assam and Tamil Nadu coast they 
are at the best in areas having more than 200 cm of rainfall with a short dry season. The trees reach great heights up to 60 meters or even above. Since the region is warm and wet throughout the year, it has the luxuriant vegetation of all kinds containing trees, shrubs, creepers, thus giving it a multi-layered structure. There is no definite time for trees to shed their leaves. Therefore, the forests appear green all the year around. Some of the commercially important trees of this forest are ebony, mahogany, rosewood, rubber and cinchona. The common animals found in these forests are elephants, monkey, lemur and deer. One horned rhinoceros are found in the jungles of Assam and West Bengal. Besides these animals, plenty of birds, bats, sloths, scorpions and snails are also found in these jungles. Now coming to tropical deciduous forests. So the, these are the most widespread forests of India. So maximum parts of India we can see tropical deciduous forests. They are also called the monsoon forests and spread over the region receiving rainfall between 200 cm to 70 cm. Trees of this forest type shed their leaves for about 6 to 8 weeks in dry summer. So therefore, all the trees shed their leaves together. Trees of this type on the basis of availability of water, these forests are further divided into moist and dry deciduous. The former is found in the areas receiving rainfall between 200 to 100 cm. These forests exist therefore mostly in the eastern part of the country, northeastern states along the foothills of Himalayas, Jharkhand, West Odisha and Chhattisgarh and on the eastern slopes of the western Ghats. Teak is the most dominant species of this forest. Bamboos, sal, shishim, sandalwood, khair, kusum, arjun and mulberry are other commercially important species. The dry deciduous forests are found in the areas having rainfall between 100 and 70 cm. These forests are found in the areas having rainfall from 100 to 70. So we can divide as moist yeah so moist moist deciduous forest has the rainfall between 200 centimeter to 100 centimeter and dry deciduous has Rainfall from 100 cm to 70 cm. So, these forests are found in the rainier parts of the Peninsular Plateau and the plains of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. There are open stretches in which teak, sal, people and neem grow. A large part of this region has been cleared for cultivation and some parts are used for grazing. In these forests, the common animals found are lion, tiger, pig, deer and elephants. A huge variety of birds, lizards, snakes and tortoises are also found here. So now talking about the thorn forest and scrubs. So in the regions with less than 70 cm of rainfall, the natural vegetation consists of thorny trees and bushes. This type of vegetation is found in the northwestern part of the country, include the semi-arid regions of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh and Haryana. Uh, acacias, palm, euphorbias and cacti are the main plant species here. Trees are scattered and have long roots venerating deep into the soil in order to get moisture. The stems are succulent conserve water. Succulent to conserve water. Means they do less transpiration in order to conserve water. 
these are mostly thick and small to minimize evaporation these forests give away to thorn forests and scrubs in arid areas in these forests the common animals are rats mice rabbits fox wolf tiger lion wild ass horses and camels talking about mountain forests in mountainous reg regions or areas the decrease in the temperature with increasing altitude leads to the corresponding change in natural vegetation so here they have told that the increasing altitude causes decrease in the temperature so we need to remember this decrease in the temperature is when there is an increase in the altitude altitude means height so as such there is a succession of natural vegetation belts in same order as we see from the tropical to tundra region the wet temperate type of forests are found between the height of 10000 and 2000 meters evergreen broad leaf trees such as oaks and chestnuts are in majority or are dominant between 1500 and 3000 meters temperate forests containing coniferous trees like pine deodar silver fir spruce and cedar are found these forests cover mostly the southern slopes of the himalayas places having high altitude in the southern and northeastern india at higher elevations or heights temperate grasslands are common at high altitudes generally more than 3600 meters above the sea level temperate forests and grasslands give away to alpine vegetation silver fir juniper pine and birches are the common trees of these forests however they get progressively stunted as they approach the snow line ultimately through shrubs and scrubs they merge into alpine grasslands these are used extensively for grazing by nomadic tribes like the gujars and bakarwals at high altitudes mosses and lichens form a part of tundra vegetation the common animals found in these forests are kashmir stag spotted deer wild sheep jack rabbit tibetan antelope yak snow leopard squirrels shaggy horn wild ibex bear and rare red panda sheep and goats with thick hair so mangrove forests the mangrove tidal forests are found in the areas of coasts influenced by tides mud and silt get accumulated or collected on such coasts dense mangroves are common varieties with roots of plants submerged under water the deltas of ganga the mahanadi the krishna the godavari and the kaveri are covered by such vegetation in the ganga brahmaputra delta sundari trees are found which provide durable hard timber palm coconut keora agar etc also grow in some parts of the delta royal bengal tiger is the famous animal in these forests turtles crocodiles gharials and snakes are also found in these forests so now we talked a lot about the flora or the plant species or the vegetation now let's talk about animals or simply the wildlife fauna we have approximately 9000 animal species in our country 2000 species of birds which constitute 13% of the world's total species of birds and we also have 2546 species of fish which account for nearly 12% of the world's stock 5 and 8% of the world's amphibians reptiles and mammals are also found in our country so now let's study about some animals so the elephants are the most majestic animals among mammals 
they are found in hot wet forests of assam karnataka and kerala the one horn rhinoceros as we studied is found in swampy and marshy lands of assam and west bengal arid areas of run of kutch and the thar desert are habitat for wild ass and camels respectively indian bison nilgai or blue bull khosinga or four horned antelope gazer and different species of deer and some other animals found in india it also has several species of monkeys india is the only country in the world that has both tigers and lions so this becomes a very important point for us the first point in here the natural habitat of indian lion is gir forest in gujarat tigers are found in the forests of madhya pradesh the sundarbans of west bengal and the himalayan region leopards too are members of the cat family they are important among animals of prey the himalayas harbor a hardy range of animals which survive in extreme cold this means that very limited animals are found there ladakh's freezing high altitudes are a home to yak the shaggy horned wild ox weighing around 1 ton the tibetan antelope the baharal or blue sheep wild sheep and the kiang or tibetan wild ass furthermore the ibex bear snow leopard and rare red panda are found in certain pockets in the rivers lakes and coastal areas turtles crocodiles and gharials are found peacocks pheasants ducks parakeets cranes and pigeons are some of the birds inhabiting the forests and wetlands of the country about 1300 plant species are endangered and 20 species are extinct so now what is the difference between endangered and extinct so endangered the word specifies that they are in danger means in some years we will not find those animals and extinct means we are not finding they are not present in this world now the main causes for this major threat to nature are hunting by greedy hunters for commercial purposes such as for leather pollution due to chemical and industrial waste acid deposits introduction of alien species and reckless cutting or careless cutting of forests bring land under cultivation and habitation are also responsible for the imbalance so we need to take care of the wildlife and the plant vegetation of our country so what were the steps taken by the government for conservation so apn biosphere reserves have been set up in the country to protect the flora and fauna following are a few the sundarbans nanda devi gulf of manar the nilgiri nakrek great nikobar manas simply pal panchmahari and achanakbar amar kantak have been included in the world network of biosphere reserves so this these are very very important so next coming to the financial and technical assistance provided by the government to many botanical gardens by government since 1992 you should remember the year so some of the places or botanical gardens which received financial and technical assistance were of kutch the coal desert the sesha chalam and panna project tiger project rhino project great indian bustard and many other eco developmental projects have been introduced 103 national parks 535 wildlife sanctuaries and zoological gardens are set up to take care of the natural heritage thank you